groundwater quality in the San Joaquin Valley. Around 1 million people in California do not have access to clean drinking water. And while California's drinking water problems span the length of the state, about half of California's failing water systems are concentrated in the agricultural San Joaquin Valley. By signing Assembly Bill 685 into law on September 25, 2012, California became the first state in the nation to legally recognize the human right to water. AB 685 recognizes that every human being has the right to safe, clean, affordable, and accessible water adequate for human consumption, cooking, and sanitary purposes. The San Joaquin Valley outlined here in red is located within California's Central Valley. A large component of the state's economy, the Central Valley produces about 25% of the nation's food, while the San Joaquin Valley is home to 4.3 million people. The vast amounts of farmland, in addition to urban and rural residential areas, requires a lot of water to sustain. The blue lines on this map show California's major rivers, which transport snowmelt from mountainous regions. The Delta Mendota Canal, seen here as a yellow line, is just one of the major canals within a complex water system, water conveyance in California. This canal is 116.5 miles long and is primarily used for irrigation along the western side of the San Joaquin Valley. We use California State Water Resources Control Board Division of Water Quality Groundwater Ambient Monitoring and Assessment Program to obtain groundwater quality data to assess where the best location to recharge groundwater would be. The following slides contain the data we obtained from Gamma. Surface water in this area tends to have a high salinity content as it accumulates salt while flowing from mountains to the delta, which has increasingly affected groundwater quality over time. This map shows the concentration of total dissolved solids, a proxy for salts and groundwater prior to 1950. The Delta Mendoza Canal is now shown in red for reference. And here is 1950 to 1979. 1980 to 2009. TDS concentrations in groundwater 2010 to present. These maps show how TDS builds up as you approach the Delta. Fertilizers used on farmlands contaminate surface water runoff with nitrate, which then infiltrates into groundwater. This map shows one measurement of nitrate prior to 1950. Nitrate concentrations from 1950 to 1979. From 1980 to 2009. From 2010 to present. Arsenic naturally occurs in confined aquifers below the SJB. The ars arsenic is released into groundwater when wells penetrate those contaminated confined aquifers. This map shows the lack of arsenic concentrations in groundwater prior to 1950, even though pumping groundwater became more prevalent after the 1920s. With the increase in groundwater pumping, we begin to see arsenic concentrations in groundwater measurements from 1950 to 1979. And you see more arsenic concentrations in groundwater from 1980 to 2009. This map shows even more arsenic in groundwater from 2010 to the present. Arsenic and nitrate drinking water contamination disproportionately impacts low income and Latino communities. So we used American Community Survey census data to identify disadvantaged communities. Disadvantaged communities in light purple are defined as those whose medium household income is less than $53,058. Severely disadvantaged communities in dark purple are defined as those whose median household income is less than $45,391. We searched for a place to recharge groundwater within these purple regions because people living here are less likely to be able to afford alternative solutions like buying clean water. The contamination that you see west of the canal is likely associated with the overlying landfill at that location. This is why we think it would be better to recharge on the eastern side of the canal where water elevation is lower than at the landfill. Recharging groundwater at this location would dilute nearby contamination, therefore helping those who depend on groundwater for daily use the most. Dilution is the solution. This location we chose has all contaminants, arsenic, nitrate, and TDS within a severely disadvantaged community. 
Recharging with clean water dilutes the overall concentration of contaminants at the site, as well as regions where groundwater will continue to flow. We think our recharge location could help people at Crow's Landing, Patterson, and possibly even as far as Modesto. In the ongoing effort to ensure that all Californians have access to clean drinking water, projects like our own are a good place to start the process of preserving aquifers for future use. The location of the Delta Mendota Canal is similar to other locations in the Central Valley that require this type of treatment and could also be applied there. This could simultaneously improve water quality as well as reduce regional subsidence, which is the type of innovative strategy needed to reach groundwater sustainability. Thank you.